We've already made the Ender animation once during the CAN modeling course. And there, as you can remember, I will show it in the screen right here. Uh, all these objects are falling into the screen or sliding into the screen. And now we are going to do it the other way around. So everything is already going to be into its position. And then we're going to move it out of the screen until finally we enter into the final frame, which is going to move inside of the camera. And there we will go over into another animation. So I'm going to select all of this, this telephone, new collection, going to call it backup phone for now we don't need it so we've got this one this empty as well and i'm going to delete all the keyframes first so let's do that make sure in the graph editor everything is unlocked go over to the timeline select everything delete the keyframes shift s cursor to world origin shift s selection to cursor and now this iphone is exactly located in the middle i am going to take this and i'm going to press on one i'm going to take the camera as well move into the graph editor make sure everything is unlocked timeline delete everything right over here i'm going to press on one Control alt zero in order to bring the camera right in the middle and g and x make sure that the line of the y-axis is exactly on this center line from the composition guides and now this should be exactly centered and that is exactly what we want as well now i'm going to turn this telephone around because this is the telephone that we are going to be transitioning into so r z 180 because I want to have the screen right over there or Y 90 and move it over to the side and maybe it should actually be the other way around so R Y minus 180 this is where the animation is technically going to end so just to give you an idea of what's going to happen we are going to move this camera let's move it downwards just a little bit we're going to move this camera into this screen like so and we're going to move from here objects the iPhone will be falling into the screen or sliding into the screen and then we will move into the next animation right over there and that's the way that it's going to happen so we've centered this near perfectly so let's g and z let's make sure that it's in the exact middle of the telephone i'm going to move 100 frames because i want it to be five seconds and i'm going to frame 100 right over there g z z and i will move this camera into the telephone right over there and if we have a look at this it's going to look like this now we are probably going to make this black but let's go back to frame zero i'm going to move the camera backwards gzz so let's move it backwards and also let me move out of geometry nodes right over there gzz let's move it backwards let's have some space for this something like this should probably do the trick so let's see yeah that's ample of space so i'm going to press i once again and then i will go over to the timeline click on T, while we've got both keyframes selected, T, and I want this to be linear. There should not be any camera animation where we are speeding up or speeding down, stuff like that. It should be linear, which is the easiest to work with. So linear, as you can see, the camera is moving towards the screen and it's maybe a little bit slow. So now that we've got this setup and the camera is moving in, I'm actually going to do something different. I'm going to select this camera and I'm going to switch these keyframes around. Why am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to show you. Basically what's going to happen is we are starting with the end frame and we're moving outwards. And then when we finish this render, we are simply going to play it backwards. And then it will move like this. And in that fashion, we can see a lot better what we are actually doing and what timing things should be occurring. And that's the way that we are going to roll with it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to select this entire telephone, I'm going to shift D and Y, bring it right over there, Alt R, all the rotations. And maybe for this one, I want the backside because the backside looks pretty cool, don't you think so? And uh, I'm going to place it somewhere right over here. And we have to start from frame one, which is going to be this. And then right here, we might want the iPhone to stay in this location. So frame 39 is where we want this to occur. So I'm going to press on I on the empty and this is where the actual animation will be taking place. But of course we are moving right through it here and that is not correct. So I'm going to place a keyframe on frame 25 as well, which means that we have half a second in which the iPhone is falling down. So I'm going to take this G and move it upwards, maybe give it a slight rotation, something like this should probably do. Press I and now it's falling down and it looks very static. So this does doesn't look like it is moving very naturally and the way we're going to fix that is by moving ahead a couple of frames let's say like four frames so 43 we are at right now and this one should have a slight wobble so the animation is not over yet when it falls actually we are going to place a 3d cursor right over here on this area where the bottom of the telephone is so 
this part right over here. Shift S, cursor to select it. And right now, if I set the pivot point to 3D cursor and I click on zero and I will go over here, select our empty R and Y, we can give it a slight wobble. So I'm going to press on I here once again. And then it should return to its original position, which is right over here. So let's have a look at this. Now, of course, it's falling down way too slow and it's not fast enough. This could also be a little bit slower, so it should probably follow over and then this part should be a bit slower. So the difference between those frames from 39 to 44 and from 44 to 52. And there you have it. But I still think it's falling down a bit too slow. So I'm going to bring this over to frame 30. We can already see it hanging in the air. So I'm actually going to leave it right there, but I'm going to move this entire setup to frame 20 and leave this on 25. There you go. And now it is standing still in this position. And that is exactly what we want. And what we can do now is take this very same telephone, Shift D, Y, bring it over here. And we should probably have a different animation for this. So I'm going to take all of this and delete the keyframes. Then starting from somewhere around here, it's where we want during the wobble of this phone, we want this animation to start. So I'm going to say like 34-ish, 35, let's say 35 for now. Uh, but the end frame should probably be on, let's say 50. So I'm going to press on I. And on 35, I'm going to move this to the side, G and X. And I'm also going to rotate it but move its pivot point to median point. I'm going to rotate it as well. So I'm going to give it a slight rotation like this. And then it's sliding into position. Of course, this also looks very static, but the way to fix that is actually by going into the graph editor. Go to the graph editor right over here. And it's moving on the X axis. So the X location is what should be slowing down. So we want it to be rotating fast in the beginning and then it should slow down over time. And that is going to be the Z rotation and the X location. So we're going to lock everything off except for the X location. I'm going to press on A and dot and now we can see it exactly in our screen, which is what we want. And now I'm going to take this handle right over here I'm going to bring it upwards. The location is already done while the rotation is still happening, which looks very unprofessional. So we're going to open up the Z Euler rotation as well. And I'm going to press on A and dot and A and dot on the Z Euler rotation and make sure that this is going faster as well. There you go. And that already looks a whole lot smoother. Now let's have a look at this. And we cannot see the rotation happening anymore. And the reason for it is that it actually should be happening a little bit more towards this side, I do believe. So I'm going to grab this. So I'm going to the object properties tab and in the Delta transform, I will change the Y location. I'm going to bring it more towards this side. Let's see what that looks like. Very cool. And the only thing that I actually want to change for this rotation is the Z rotation in the Delta transform as well. I want it to be rotated 180 degrees. Why? Well, then we have a screen here instead of two times the camera lens. So let's have a look at this. And there you go, there you have it. Now, all we need to do is replicate this very same motion multiple times until we have a decent looking animation all the way until frame 100. And that is exactly what we are going to be doing. So I'm going to select this entire telephone again. I'm going to press Shift D and Y. Let's move it over there. And if we play this animation right now, again, it's going to move to the same location as it was before. And we don't want that actually, we want it to be over here. So I'm going to take it on the Y location. So I'm going to take this empty and I'm going to move this on the Delta transform on the Y location towards a different position, like right over here. Now, one thing that's annoying me is the fact that it's now the same animation and it's occurring at the same time as well, which is definitely not what we want. Now, basically all we have to do is follow this very same setup but in order to get it to look like this, what we are going to do is going into the graph editor. And right now, actually, we are going to change the location of this to the other side. So all we have to do is go over to this location of the minus of the X and place a minus in front of it. So now this is going to be on the same location as this one, but then it's going to be on this side. Uh, we don't have to change the Z and the Y values because we already changed the Y value. We want it to be over here. And there's the X rotation, which is moving that side. And I already think it looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, however, the Y rotation, so that's going to be this angle, this way it's shaped, uh, should be in the minus. So I'm going to take the rotation on the Y, 
place a minus in front of it. And now this is already starting to look the same as the other one, only it's coming from the other side. So that's all we really need to do. So I'm going to press on I right now, and then it's moving over, but it's wobbling towards the wrong side. And we cannot really fix this in the transform mode. And why is that? Well, we actually use the 3D cursor in order to get this animation and we cannot transfer it over that easily. So we have to go to this keyframe, then click on the telephone, make sure to select an area right over here, shift S cursor to select it. Uh, basically what we want to do is uh, delete this keyframe, uh, R and Y, and move it ourselves to approximately the same value as the one before. So 6.19, etc. And then we can press I once again and things should work out fine. So let's have a look. Now, of course, both of those are falling at the same time. And I also like to keep the distance somewhat the same between all of them. So I'm going to change the Y location to something like this on the Delta transform, by the way. And I'm going to take all of these keyframes and have them come in just a little bit later. Why? Because if we move this one, then this one moves and then this one moves into place and everything will look absolutely stunning. Now I'm going to take this iPhone. Well, first, let's have a look in the camera view, by the way. And then we are going to take this rotation of this telephone. Let's select it. Shift D, Y, bring it right over there. And of course we have to change the location from where it's coming from. And in this case, it is going to be quite simple. All we need to do is what's happening right now. It's right over there. We want to change the Y location. It should be right over here. And we want it to be coming from the other side. So right here on this keyframe, the location X, which is going to be this line right over there is on the minus, but we can change it to a plus value like this. And then we have that keyframe. Uh, the Z value should probably be in the minus. And if we press Y and it's moving outward first and then it's moving inwards. And the reason for that is because of the graph editor work that we did. So if you move into the graph editor, you can probably see that now that it's in the negative, it's going to give us an overshoot. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean right over here on the X location. And it is indeed giving us an overshoot. So actually this is the baseline, but it's moving towards that side first before it moves towards our desired location. And the way to fix that is actually by taking this little handle right here, S Y minus one, and then it will be inverted exactly as the other one. So now the location is working out fine, but the rotation is doing the exact same problem. So we have to select the Z Euler rotation. It's having this overshoot, select this S Y minus one, and now it is inverted. Let's see what it does for us. Very good. All right, all we have to do now is unlock everything, go back to the timeline, select the keyframes and move it toward the desired position. So let's see what it looks like in the camera vision. Very nice, very good. Now with motion blur, this is going to look very fine. Of course, you can play around with the graph editor and make sure that some of these animations look a bit smoother, but I'm actually quite content with the way this looks. So the camera, let's go into the camera timeline. Let's see, maybe we don't need all this extra space. I think the animation is already done the way it is. But what we can also do is maybe speed it up in the beginning and then have it slow down. By the way, control shift and space will allow you to play backwards. And then it's moving inside of this. And maybe we can make it a little bit faster right over here and a little bit faster in the beginning. So let's have a look at the graph editor for now and go to the, let's see what location are we working on the Y location. So let's take that, go over here to the Y location, open it up dot and this is now a linear curve. So we have to change the interpolation. I'm going to set it to Bessier and that allows us to move and work with these handles. And now basically what I'm going to do is I want it to be fast in the beginning, which is right over here. So it's going to move in fast first. And let's say somewhere around over here, we want it to slow down again. And the way to do it would be to take this handle and giving it this animation right here. So it's moving in fast. Then it's slowing down, following the animation, and then it's transitioning into the telephone. So we somewhat have an S-curve, like this. Looks very good. And the only thing that's left to do is to take this one, and it should be a bit smaller right here on frame 100. Why? Well, we can actually see it sticking out and it should be magic. Everything should look like magic. And there is no magic if you already know where we're headed towards. So what we are going to do, move to frame right over here, as long as it's in the screen. So until this part, it should be 100%. So I'm going to select this empty, press I, and this will 
place keyframes on all the properties, so rotation, scale, location, etc. And then here, one frame further, I'm actually going to set this to median point and scale it down to a very small phone. And now you can see there is no phone when we enter into this animation. And look at this. This could also be a loop, by the way, which is what we're going to be making later on. There you go. So starting from frame 80 works as well. It's going to be a three second animation. All right, and this is what it looks the other way around. So the only thing left to do is actually to change some of the colors. So I'm going to change the color of this iPhone, for example, it's going to be more bluish or maybe this one. And I'm also going to change the LED screen. So maybe we can change this to something funny or to something that is relatable to people that when they are using an iPhone. And let's see, if we go into this side, we also have to do some lighting work because here it is lit correctly, but here I'm not entirely sure. So we are going to have to change that as well. Make sure that we have some decent lighting on these iPhones. So let's have a look at this one first. I'm going to make this a different color. I'm going to make this the bluish tone. I do believe they have like a dark blue color for the iPhone as well. Uh, so I'm heading over into the Apple logo backside and shader editor and I will duplicate this actually. Make sure that we are working on a different material others, otherwise you are changing everything. And now I am heading over to the color of this and that's right over here. Now what am I going to do? I'm just going to keep it very simple. I'm going to set this to a slight bluish tone and I'm going to select this make it a whole lot darker, bring it into the blues and make it pretty damn dark. I'm going to do the same for this one. Make it a bit darker. Go over here, take this hex code and let's bring it into the base color of this one. And it's going to be a little bit darker as well. No problem. I'm going to decrease the roughness just a little bit. And uh, we have to go into this camera backplate as well. So the camera plate, I'm going to duplicate this as well. And I'm going to change the color to the exact hex code that we used before. And since it's glass, it has to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to increase the lightness of this and maybe change the color to a less saturated bluish tone, something like this, and bring it down until it fits correctly onto the model. And I'm going to keep it like that. I'm not going to overcomplicate this, but now we also have this cool color of an iPhone and I'm not entirely sure if this exists, but it does now. So basically all we have to do now is change the screens of all of these phones. Now I'm not actually going to show you how to do this for all the screens, but I will give you a quick walkthrough. So basically what you want to do is head over into this model, then go over to screen LED, which is already that texture. And if we click on select and right here, we have selected this entire screen texture. And now right over here in the shader editor, you can simply swap out the image for something that you like, be it a meme, be it something relatable, be it whatever you want. So you can decide on that for yourself. Now, one thing that is important that we have to fix is to go over to the timeline. Let's go over to this telephone. And actually we don't want to have a LED screen here at all. So we want this to be black. And now all we have to do is copy this and drag out the iPhone screen. So have a look at this and now it is white. And that is because we have an emission strength right here. So I'm going to set it to zero. And we should also go into the screen glass, copy it, go over to the shader editor and increase the roughness until nothing is visible at all. And the reason why we are doing this is because we have to transition into this screen and we are simply going to do it by, uh, by masking it out and doing it in the editing program later on. So that's the way to do it. And you can change out the screens for yourself. Now, if you want to improve the lighting, you can. You can go over here to light, add an area, scale it upwards, scale it on the Y axis, rotate it by minus 45 degrees, bring it upwards, G and X. Let's increase the power of this and let's have a look in our camera fish as well where is this area lamp it's right over here so if we turn that on and off you can already see that we get a cool reflection on the top of this and that should be consistent throughout the entirety of this animation now of course i'm also using an hdri i think it's the canary war 4k which you can get for free on hdri haven and it's on 0.5 strength so we get some reflections anyways and that's the way it looks what we can also do is perhaps take this area lamp bring it over here alt r r y minus 90 r y 90 Bring it over there and have a light shining on this bottom side perhaps so maybe something like uh, like this so we get a cool light from over there and we get a cool light from over there and maybe that already is enough for this animation to work out fine now what we can do as well is go over here where all the iphones are standing still then add a plane plane let's scale it upwards make sure that nothing is coming through the plane just a little bit down like this s and y s and x make sure it covers the entire area then take this back plate, bring it upwards, 
go over to object mode, control A, apply the skill, then take this, control B, and give it a bunch of those segments. Then I'm going to shape this auto smooth, and that looks very clean, besides the fact that this area lamp is sticking out of it. So we have to move this upwards so it doesn't stick out, scale it down so we do get the approximate lighting that we want. S and Z, bring it down. And what we can also do is bring it further to the right side so it's not bothering us at all. And you can also decrease the spread so it shines only on the iPhone. So right over there, you can see that it is doing its lighting work. If I turn this on and off, you can see that it is working. Finally, maybe what we can do is add an area lamp. Let's take this one, for example, Shift D, scale it down, scale it down on the Y. Let's bring it right over there and have it shine a light on the back of this iPhone as well something like this. And what we can do is maybe select this entire iPhone and we can place it into a collection. I'm going to call it final iPhone. Then I'm going to select this area lamp and I will go over to this tab, scroll down, go to shading, light linking, new, and then I'm going to drag the final phone into this area. And now this light doesn't operate on the floor. It only operates on this iPhone, which is very good because now we can play around with the lighting a whole lot more. I'm going to bring it right over there and maybe I'm going to duplicate it again, Alt R, RY90 and have one come in from the side as well in order to give it this type of look. You can see what it's doing and we are adding some extra to it instead of having that flat area right over there. And I believe that this is going to be a very good looking render. Either way, that was the tutorial. Make sure to click on subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. I get the money and it's right on cue. Keep the duffel bag up inside my coupe. Hold a couple racks, tell them I love you. You want to be a boss, do it like I do. Uh.